And so I'm extremely excited to um, have our first teacher, and I'm going to say teacher, sharer, um, with you tonight. And that is our director, Mary Hopper. Um, and I'm just going to share a little bit from my heart to Miss Mary, is she has been an inspiration to me in so many different ways. Um, she is always positive. Um, she is always looking at the bigger picture in life and in business. She looks at life through a glass that is always um, full always full, not half full, not half empty, but it is full. And uh, when you get the opportunity, not if, but when you get the opportunity to hang out with Mary, um, you'll just truly feel the genuineness, you'll feel her heart, and you will experience just true joy. And so without further talking from me, <laughs> let's get on to um, in having Mary share some of her journey and what she wants to talk to you tonight about. So welcome, Mary. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Really nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I do try to approach life from um, a glass full standpoint. We have so much to be thankful for, so much to be grateful for. Um, I just, yeah, we, Heidi and I have talked about it, how privileged mm -hmm. men, most of us are um, just beyond beyond measure. So I do try to be grateful for everything that I have every single day. Um, it is easy to get bogged down by the details, but I always try to bring it back to um, really what's important in life. So I wanted to, I actually did something today. I, I looked back um, in my journey and before I talk about, I'm going to share just, I've got four tips um, on kind of how to grow your business or how to um, success is such a hard word because success is different for everybody, but just some things if you're looking to grow um, your business, things you can do. So I've got four um, tips, but first I wanted to talk just a little bit about my journey, um, how I got to where I am, because I think that's really important to hear other people's stories. Um, and many, most people's stories start with um, I joined for the discount or I joined for the kit. Um, a lot of people, not many, you will find joined because they were looking for a career. Um, because I think a lot of people have uh, views on direct sales that you can't make it a career, you can't make $100,000 a year selling Tupperware or whatever it is, um, but that's false. Um, so I joined, uh, this October will be my three year anniversary. I joined in October of 2015 and 2015 was the hardest year of my life. Um, in March of 2015, my first son was born, but he was born, still born at 27 weeks. So I went through the worst thing that ever happened to me. Um, and I think I was just looking for something positive. At the time, I didn't realize it, um, but I met Michelle at, um, Michelle Hartman is my director or my upline, um, but I met her at a social media breakfast, like a networking group, and um, she gave me a catalog, and I looked at, I needed that serving center, so I had a party. Long story short, I fell in love with the product. I decided to join, give it a try. I never in a million years thought I would ever be a director. I wasn't, I wasn't in it to make money. I was in it to get product. Um, so I was looking at my journey. I spent a lot of time um, in the first couple years of my business uh, just enjoying the product and getting free product. And I um, stepped up to manager in 2016 in April. So I was in for a year and a half, right? No, I, 2017 in April. So I was in for a year and a half before I became a manager and it just kind of happened. Um, some people joined me and Michelle's like, you're a manager. And I was like, yay, I don't know what that means. And I didn't really, I wasn't plugged in. I wasn't, it just, 
I still was not really looking to do it. So, um, so I was a manager from April, April, May, June, July, and August, which was really interesting to look like how long I was a manager. I was receiving some bonuses. You get, you know, get some extra bonuses for manager pay. Um, and I wasn't really doing that much. So I thought that was kind of cool to look back at that. Um, even when I was still kind of not engaged in it, I was still making some money from it. Um, and then in October, I stepped up to star manager. And October was the, the changing, shifting month, month for me. October is record breaker. And I saw a sheet of um, things you could earn. And I saw a Kate Spade purse on there. If you sold $10,000 in personal sales, um, you could get this Kate Spade purse with the wallet and, and I never had a Kate Spade purse. I needed it. So I went crazy last October, like crazy. I partied, 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 and I did a lot of Facebook parties, but I, I did a lot of in-home too. I partied, partied. I think I sold almost 8,000. Um, I recruited, that was the month that, um, that I went into the director and qualification um, program, the DIQ. So in November, I was executive manager, December, I was executive. So October, November, December, and then I um, became director at the same time earning the car, which was never in my sight. I, went, I wanted that trip to Hawaii. So that was what I was shooting for. And okay, so long story short, that's how I got here. But I thought it was really interesting to look at how many months I was a manager, how long it kind of took me to absolutely um, to get to get there so mm -hmm. um i also did some figuring on i was i'm actually writing a blog post about my monthly income because i think that's really important to share um i spend a lot of time on my business i love it um so it doesn't feel like work um a lot of people are like you work all the time it's like i really love it so it's really hard I have to tell myself to stop working <laughs> because it's just something I want to keep doing. Um, so I don't complain about having to work, work. Um, but my average monthly income that I, my biggest paycheck was last January when I became a director, you get a thousand dollar step up bonus. And I don't know if this is, if you guys want to know or anything, but I thought it was really interesting um, in January with my personal sales commissions and my team commissions and my bonuses, I made $3,000, 3038 in January. So my average monthly income since becoming a director is $1,295. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> and honestly, there's been several months where May, I think I partied twice. I mean, I'm, I have another business, so I was busy. And, but those are some things I was crunching today. I thought that was really, I love that I can work this business around my family. So Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to go into some tips on how I've worked my business, some things that I have done. Sorry about my crying baby. <laughs> all right, so number one is, we hear it all the time, but I cannot stress it enough, is consistency. You have to stay consistent. And Heidi talked about last night um, at Rally, stay the course. Um, even when you hear those no's and you get discouraged or somebody doesn't do something you want them to because you will have a lot of that <laughs> or says they're going to do something and doesn't um, not taking that to heart not taking it personally um, just working your business staying in your lane and and doing it daily you have to do it daily um, I've kind of challenged myself lately three phone calls a day it doesn't matter who they're to if it's to one of my team members, if it's to a new team member, if it's to a host, um, if it's to a potential host, but I need to make three phone calls a day. That's my goal. Um, and then I know that I'm reaching out to people. I do a lot of messaging too, but phone calls are really, really where you, you, they're efficient. <laughs> they can hear your voice. They can hear your excitement. Um, if you want to get something done, make a phone call. So yeah, and then, yeah, stay the course. That's a bit consistency. Um, keeping, keeping going one step at a time, even when it feels like it's moving slow. And then that kind of goes along with number two, um, which is show up. Uh, we, I've been doing some, some more Facebook lives in, um, in our team group and on my business page. And I feel like it's, it's shifting some things and that has kind of taught me or showed, showed me some, I, I needed that reminder, um, 
that I need to show up even when it feels hard or I don't haven't showered or <laughs> um, I need to be me. I need to be authentic. Um, I need to show myself, not just the good stuff, but the bad, not bad stuff, but the stuff that isn't rainbows and puppy Perfect. dogs. Mm -hmm. um, I need to be real. Uh, people want to connect with me when I'm being myself. So I'm showing up, being present. Um, when you're, when you're on a call with somebody, you're not messaging somebody else you're you're showing up for them um and 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 being right there in the moment with them um and when you show up when you start showing up like doing live videos or you start making phone calls you start building confidence um you start believing in yourself things start going your way and it feels really good it feels super scary to show up trust me, <laughs> very scary. Um, but once you show up and start doing it consistently, um, you start feeling more confident and it gets easier and, and then things again, start happening. Um, so, and then when you build confidence, it's, it's a trickle effect. You start empowering others and you don't even know it, mm -hmm. but you start showing up, you start doing lives or whatever it is, however you decide to show up, people see that mm -hmm. and they hear you, even if you don't think they hear you um, and you're impacting them and empowering them. And it might empower them to then do something that's a little bit scary or out of their comfort zone and, and help them um, believe in themselves too. So mm -hmm. um, number three tip. So, so far we've got consistency. Um, number two is showing up. Uh, three is just deciding that you want it. Um, I know a lot of people that say they want it or say they want something, doesn't have to be Tupperware necessarily, um, but then they don't do anything about it. And nothing's gonna happen unless you do it. So um, deciding you want it, you gotta let go of what other people might think or what you think they're thinking because they're not thinking about that. They're only, they got their heads down on their own stuff. So they're not even thinking about what's, what you're doing or um mm -hmm. uh, it, it, and and what they think doesn't matter oh, the only thing that matters is what you think and how it makes you feel and what you want mm -hmm. so um making that decision deciding that it's something you want um focusing on it i highly highly recommend writing down what you want it doesn't matter what you want there's no right or wrong um i wanted that hawaii trip so I wrote it down. I wrote down that I was going to do it. I was going to do it in six months and I did it. Um, I had it in front of me every day. I actually taped it to the back of my planner <laughs> and I now have my new goal taped to the back of my planner. I see it every single day. Every time I pull out my planner, I don't have it on my passion planner, but I have it on my Tupperware planner. So, but I, I'm a firm believer if you write it down, it becomes your reality. And that is, it, it'll happen. It will happen. It may take a while because everything worth having takes time, but it will happen. So write it down, put it in front of you, plaster it on your mirror, tell it to yourself every day, keep it in front of you. You got to have that focus because because you've decided you wanted it, you want it, and you're the only one that can, can make you have it or get it. So, mm -hmm. and then number four kind of goes along with everything we talked about, but stepping out of your comfort zone. So that kind of goes along with showing up, um, but do the stuff that scares you, um, the stuff that you, that kind of gives your tummy a little bit of a tummy ache. <laughs> I mean, not a bad tummy ache, but the stuff that I, I just think there's a lot of us missing out on a lot of things because we've convinced ourselves that either A, we don't deserve it or B, we can't do it. And that's false. Both of those things are false. Um, you can do anything you want if you've decided that you want it and you're consistent. <laughs> um, and yeah, you, you just, you can have anything. Um, so, but you have to be willing to take a risk. You have to be willing to let go of some of the comforts. Um, and you have to be willing to try things you've never tried. 
because you're not going to get the same results by doing, I mean, you're going to get the same results by doing the same thing. You're not going to get something different unless you do something different. Mm -hmm. Um, So um, yeah, that stuff that scares you, that's the stuff you should do first. And then the rest of the stuff is just, you know, stuff. So that's the good stuff, the stuff that scares you. Um, I told he- like Heidi and I have had a lot of conversations. I'm a, I'm, I'm very, I'm an honest person. Like I can't, I can't hide anything. So if I feel something, you see it, um, which is, I think a, a strength, but also can be a fault sometimes. Um, but I truly believe that if you want a deeper connection with your team members or your friends or your family, I know it. It's not, I don't believe, or it's not that I just believe it. I know it. You have to be honest. Mm -hmm. Even that stuff that is uncomfortable and just feels yucky. um, It has to be said and it has to be worked through and it, and then you move on. So I, 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 I still struggle with this and it's something I'm working on, but when I feel something and it doesn't feel right, I'm, I'm speaking my truth and as long as you come from a place of respect and mm-hmm. understanding um, and let the other person speak their truth or whatever it is, I just think that there's a lot of value in that and connections will be deeper and, and things, things start happening then when you show a little bit of vulnerability and, um, and honesty. So I think there's something to be said about that. And that is super uncomfortable to do. Um, but something that we as women then start feeling a, a deeper connection with each other when we've been vulnerable and honest with each other. So I see that happening and it makes my heart really happy. I just actually got like a little flutter. <laughs> um, but but that's that's what I crave in life is that deeper connection with other women. Um, I just, I, that women are empowering and uplifting and can be, I mean, we pretty much rule the world. So (laughs) we're awesome. Um, but I just think we all need to believe that about ourselves. And, um, yeah. So another thing along those lines about setting, um, getting out of your comfort zone is being different. So don't do what everybody else is doing. Um, do what feels good for you and what, um, what, what you are, who you are. So that kind of goes along the lines of like branding yourself, figuring out what you like and, and creating your business around that. Um, for me, it's, I love local foods and healthy foods and gardening and canning and all of that. And so I do a lot of that in my community as well. And that helps my Tupperware business. So, and then, um, yeah, just be okay with not appealing to everybody. You aren't going to make everybody happy um, all the time. And if you're being yourself, if you're authentic, you will attract the right people. You are not going to attract everyone and that's okay. Um, And you have to be okay with that. Um, But you will attract the right people. The right vibe. What is it? Good vibe. what is it your vibe attracts your tribe or something like that yeah something along that line yeah so whatever Mm -hmm. you're putting out there to the world is what's going to come back to you that's Mm -hmm. karma actually that's uh what my necklace means it's a little Mm -hmm. circle and it just means karma so um if you're putting out positive energy if you're having positive thoughts in your head um that's what's coming back to you positive if you're constantly telling telling yourself you're not good enough or um, you need to go on a diet or you, you can't do something, then guess what? That's, that's your reality that you're living in. You're telling yourself those things and that's, that is what it is. So I've really been working on mindset a lot and it's hard. It's a constant, constant battle, but I truly believe in, in that positive attracts positive. So, so I'm going to sum up four tips, consistency, showing up, deciding that you want it, and then stepping out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So Mary, I want to ask you a couple of different questions. So number one is, do you have to do, some people might be listening to this and they might be going, man, I work a full-time job. 
do I have to do Tupperware full time in order to be successful or do I have to get rid of my full time job in order to be successful in Tupperware? No. Um, well, we say it all the time, but you can, you can make your business whatever you want it to be. Um, I own a business with my husband, so I work another more than full-time job. Um, it just looks different to me because I work from home, um, so I don't have to go to go to work, but I'm working when I'm at home. So, um, but no, you can, I know a lot of people actually that have full-time jobs that are working this business on the mm -hmm. side, um, working it to eventually do Tupperware full time. Um, but again, it's about deciding that you want it. I mean, if you want it, you'll do it. That that's the bottom line. Um, and, but if you don't want it enough, then you won't and you'll work, you'll continue to work your job and, and continue with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, I honestly, I do spend some nights late at night working but I love it. And that's the sacrifice I'm willing to make to, um, to, to reach my goals. Um, I'm not doing it every night and I have an understanding with my husband and he supports me and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we were doing this together and it's, it's exciting what the pot, I mean, the opportunity and the, the possibilities are, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's available for everybody. And, you know, something that, that stuck out to, to me that, that you shared, Mary, is because for about a year and a half, you just kind of, I mean, you, you were in it for the discount and you said that, mm -hmm. um, but you were open. What I heard is you were open to possibilities. Mm hmm you know, it's one of those things of being open to possibilities. Us as women, we come in, we do something, we think we're going to do X, Y, and Z, and that's it. Nobody's talking us into anything, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not our mission is to talk people into doing stuff. But again, you are open to things. You are open to possibilities. You are open to something different. Mm -hmm. And you took that, you took that chance if you will or you took that next step and so if you if somebody was listening and they came in for the discount um what would you encourage them or what would you say to them to maybe give the business a try or partying a try? What, what, like, is there anything that you would say to be like, you know what, these are some of the things that I did that took me from this to this. Um, I, you just said something different. Like that is, it's interesting that you say that because when Dave and I got married, I, I've just always had this in my head. Like I was an occupational therapist. I was working full time at Mercy. I had a full time job. I, I had a great job. I mean, I was making good money and we both were, um, but we both were unhappy. We, we just, we were happy together, but when we had to go to work and we had to work for somebody else, I would come home. They had the, all these rules I had to follow. And I really hated to be told what to do. <laughs> I hated it so much. Um, and, and I just decided one day, I'm like, I want something different. I don't want this. Like, this isn't mm -hmm. how I want 10 years from now. I don't want to be going to mercy to work. I just don't, that's not what I want. And so I need to do something different. Mm -hmm. um, and so we decided then um, we made a plan to get out of debt and we made a plan to, we were both going to quit our jobs. I was going to do traveling therapy and he was going to come with me and we didn't really know how it was going to pan out, but we just, I was like, I'm quitting in August and that's the end. Like we're, I'm quitting. <laughs> and so we, we did everything we could to pay off all our loans and debt and um, Dave Ramsey debt snowball. If you needed mm -hmm. that, that, um, thing. Um, I love to talk about it. So if you want to talk about it, let me know. That's amazing. <laughs> um, but we, we were debt free. I quit my job and then we ended up buying, um, we were fortunate and his parents had a business that we ended up buying, but we were in a financial position that we could do that. So from day one, I decided I'm doing something different. I want a different life. And I think I've always been open to 
what could be, you know, and I, I think I just encourage people. I think some sometimes we put ourselves in a box or where we're at is where we're at and we can't ever go anywhere else or be anything else or do anything else. And that's not true. I mean, I, I truly believe anybody can do anything they want to if they want it. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I, and luckily my husband is on the same page as me and wants the same things. We want, we want the same things for our family. And so that's how we make our decisions for our family, what we're going to do, what we're working towards, what, mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, we just believe in, in the same things and want the same thing. So it's, it's really nice, but. Absolutely. We want something different. We just, we don't want the traditional, traditional nine to five jobs. And I respect people that do that. Um, but I, for right now in our life, like that is, that doesn't work for us. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And the last question I have for you mm -hmm. is, so what's next for you? Well, um, I am looking, I'm going to step up to star director, director by the end of the year. I'm working on stepping, promoting, uh, my friend Kathy, which just a little side note, like this business is, it's, it's not all about making money or selling Tupperware. Um, you just, the friendships that you make and the people that you meet, I've met people that I never would have met. Um, and just becoming, becoming close to them and, and learning about their life. And yeah, just, you just learn a lot from, from the other people in this business, as long as you're open to it. Um, so, so yeah, star director by the end of the year, that's my goal. I'm hoping that I get to go to leadership summit in February. Um, Dave and I are taking a trip to Hawaii in March, March 6th. I already earned that. So that's exciting. Um, and then, um, I really want to bump up to that next car. That's, that's mm. the next, yeah. so elite, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. So I want to take just a few minutes from you guys, if you don't mind, um, Mary, just mm -hmm. for a couple of minutes. Yep. And then open it up to them, um, to all of our, to our, all of our listeners. If you guys have any questions that you would like to. Um, maybe pick Mary's brain on for a few um, that we have her. <laughs> well, thank You're you guys for surprised. listening to me. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, Mary, I got a question for you. Oh, boy, what is it? <laughs> so coming into this Tupperware adventure, what is something that you just, you are really excited about, but that you never expected out of this? Um... I know that's a tough one. <laughs> that is, well, I mean, I didn't expect any of it really. Like I, I think before you logged on, Michelle, I kind of talked about my journey. Like yeah. I was in for a year and a half without doing, I mean, I was selling a little bit, but um, yeah, I just, I didn't expect any of it. I didn't, I never expected to be driving a Tupperware car. <laughs> like that is, it just blows my mind still. When I look outside, I'm like, there's a car in my driveway that says Tupperware on it. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> but it's there. And mm -hmm. yeah. So, and yeah, I don't know that, that, and the, like I, the friendships, the people, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. That's fun. I I think it's it's fun to watch you and your son in this Tupperware adventure um, as, as he's there with you. So mm -hmm. thanks, Michelle. <laughs> yeah. So I want to say thank you. Thank you for sharing your journey with, with others. Um, I know one of your big missions is to definitely empower women um, and to help bring out their boldness. And you definitely help do that. So thank you for being you. Thank you for sharing your journey with others. Um, the good, the bad, the hard, the, the indifferent. Um, because you know what? I'm sure it's impacted many lives that have been listening and will continue to listen to this. So thank you for bringing us into your world. And um, I'm super excited that uh, you're part of this journey with all of us. Me too. Thank so you thank guys you. for listening to me. Thanks everybody for